going live hey everybody it's show time show time and i'm a giant nerd all right <laughs> do, do, do. oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody, it's a dinosaur. His name's Rex and blah 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 bloop. Do 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 do. Yeah! This episode is sponsored by Quackalert. They are ridiculously in love with ducks. I have no clue why, but you know what? It's cool. Two, one. Oh my goodness. Hello, everybody. Welcome. It's Chris from the Charity Board Gamer. I am excited because I get to have Elena on. Uh, and if you don't know, uh, uh, she has been on, I think you've been on twice now? Uh, yeah. Uh, to yes. play games? Yeah. Okay. We played Creature Comforts during our 18-hour charity live stream and then during our 24-hour live stream, which I don't understand how I was awake at that <laughs> I point. I don't either. We played... Um, it, we played what? No, no, we didn't play the. We, we no, played... it was the twenty-four hour one that we played, uh, Creature right. Comforts. Yeah, that was like eight o'clock. Was that eight o'clock in the morning? It was very early. It was like very I woke early, up and I was yeah. so, I was so dead. I was so dead tired, and I was just like ready to crash because there's that period of time when you do a twenty-four hour straight, and you're just like, I I need to go to sleep, <laughs> and like. And I, I didn't, and it was it was why I probably would have um, been wanting to sleep for twelve of those twenty four <laughs> hours. So I I don't know how you got through that. 
Um, you know, it's it's worth it when we talk charities and True. we talk nonprofits. Yeah. Like when you know that the the money that you're raising for a cause is going to, going to help some children. Like we've we've got a kid in this area that uh, that actually um, is local, and she is just a bundle of joy. Uh, she's what ten now? I think she's yeah, she's the same age as uh, Elijah. Uh, no. She's not. She is still nine. She turned nine in September. She turns ten this September. Yeah, but she's one of the most beautiful little girls, uh, a joy to play games with, and so I will do it any time of the week if it's going to help out a family like hers. Um, but yeah, and then we played Rec Raiders, and uh, I think did I beat Justin that game? I we we did horribly. I remember we both did. I won. You won the game. <laughs> You I will won, not forget that. but I did better than, yeah, you won the game, but I did better than Justin. And so that started a really cool streak. Like we started actually, I think, I think that was one of the first games where I was actually, we were keeping track of how many games uh, he and I had won. He's currently, I think 16 games, 16 games that he's beat me in. I've beaten him in 12. Wow. So I, I yeah. Uh, and then in cooperative games, I tried to kill him off somehow. But sadly, you can't do that in cooperative <laughs> games. I guess I don't know what that's about. That's very true. <laughs> yeah, but I'm I'm excited because uh, you know we we've had the chance to talk before. We've had the chance to be able to play um, games and, and and hello, James. James, you're just an amazing person. I see you in the chat. Um, but it is just you know, I I have truly had a good interaction with you, and I, I from the interactions we've had, um, it's it's definitely been enjoyable. But Tell everybody, for, for, for those of us that don't know who you are, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, tell us about what your journey was into this amazing realm of board games. I know I'm going to have a lot of other questions. Right. And if any of you in the chat have any questions, please feel free to ask them as well. Uh, if you notice, there's a really cool game behind her uh, called Rec Raiders, which uh, is from Kids Table Board Gaming. Uh, so definitely, definitely recommend that already. But yeah, All go right. ahead. So, um, I am Helena Capel. I live in Toronto, Canada with my family, my uh, husband and two children. And uh, we like to play games. It wasn't always like that. Um, probably in my mid-20s, Josh brought home Catan and uh, I was like, this, this game is not for me. It's a little too much. Um, and my experience with gaming as a kid was more like Monopoly and Sorry, and I never connected with those games. My parents always wanted to play, and we did play them often. I just didn't like them, so I thought that I just didn't like games. Uh, and then he convinced me to play it, and I think in that first year, we played it, I don't know, four or five hundred times in one year so definitely more than uh one time a day um and then you know we started we started playing other games carcassonne and tick tried and you know all the the nice classics that you uh, would think of in terms of uh entryway or gateway games depending on how you look at it um and then we started getting a little bit deeper into games and the way that happened was because my husband Josh started doing the art for some games. Um, he did a bunch of work for Z-Man Games back in the day, uh, and he actually had one of his games published through Z-Man uh, called Wasabi. It's a uh, it's a classic around here. We love it. Um, and there's typically somebody in the audience who knows what that game is. Uh, it's a tile tile placement game. Really really nice game. Um, Anyway, to make a long story short, we became gamers. And one of the games that Josh worked on was Endeavor. And uh, Endeavor was became a favorite of ours uh, and still is a favorite of ours. Um, and I just absolutely loved that game. It was around the time where we ha when we had a child who was becoming of gaming age. And at that time, I thought, well, the games for kids are, you know, Monopoly Junior and uh, what's that awful one called? Uh, Shoots and Ladders. Oh, boy. 
Um, mm-hmm. And he was he was obsessed with shoots and letters. And all I wanted to do playing that game was poke my eye out with a pin. It was just not fun for me. And so I said, there must be a better way. I want to enjoy playing with with my children. And so we started looking into making games that our kids can enjoy and that we can enjoy as well. And, you know, fast forward a few years from then, um, we designed a game called Food Fighters. We decided to self-publish it onto Kickstarter. It did pretty well, I think. It, at the time, I think we raised $29,000 Canadian for a two-player family game, which at the time, nobody was really on Kickstarter looking for family games at that point. Um, and so, you know, we were able to uh, print the game and, uh, you know, it's been printed a couple times since. So the game is still going and it's six years already, um, which is nice. And a little while after that, we, you know, we started making other games as well. But a little while after that, Z-Man gave up the rights to Endeavor. And uh, I said to Josh, I have to make that game. That, that it's mechanically the the uh, game that i just i hold everything up to it's just so engaging from the moment you start until the end of the game and the arc of the game is just so beautiful and and i I already had experience publishing so i said like you know because josh had uh done the art for this game uh let's contact the designers and and see if they're if they're willing to do this at the time they thought they were maybe going to go to Kickstarter with it themselves. And I spent a really long time convincing them that they shouldn't do that. And I should instead. And uh, so they agreed to it. Eventually it, it took, it took some convincing because I had, yes, I had experience publishing, but I had not experienced publishing um, games for adults. So I, I was making family games. And so uh, they put their faith in me and, Josh and I um, partnered with uh, Mark from Grand Gamers Guild um, to make it happen. And it just, like, it was amazing. And it took us to a very different level. Um, And so all through this time, I was also a full-time teacher. Um, At that point, I was teaching grade seven and eight math and science and design and technology. and, And I loved my job but I also really, really loved the publishing. And uh, luckily I I was able, because Endeavor did so well, I was able to see if I could just like maybe take a year off and see if this publishing thing full-time was for me. So I took a year off and a year became two years and then the pandemic hit and I was feeling like I was missing teaching and you know, I felt like all the stars were aligning for me to go back. I was going to continue doing the publishing bit, but I, I wanted to go back. Um, and so this is my year back, and it's been, it's been a struggle and a balancing act, and it's been amazing. Um, and I'm very happy that I did go back to teaching because I realized that it's it's in my heart. Um, so I love publishing and I'm going to continue doing that, but teaching also is, is a thing that is so, um, so very important to me. Um, and so, uh, you know, the, the story continues. We've, we've made lots of games. I think we're on game number 12 now we're going into, I can't, uh, can't tell you what it is yet. That will be an story. It will be announced next week, (sighs) but it's really good. Uh, so okay. I have I have two brands, and one brand is KTBG or Kids Table Board Gaming, and that's the um, the family brand. And then the strategy game brand for for adults is uh, Burnt Island Games. And so we we like to balance things. I, I don't really like to make more than one game a year because I want to make really good games and I want to keep uh, my team small. Um, and so we're, uh, we're now on, coming off of Creature Comforts uh, that you mentioned we had played online. Um, we're coming off of Creature Comforts and moving into our next game for Burnt Island. So stay tuned That's next really cool. week for more information. 
next so. week okay well folks we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and no. um <laughs> oh, next week Sorry. why why do you have to t- why do you have to taunt us so i can, I can give All you right. a little hint okay that sounds good uh it has something to do with a game that we've made before that's all okay. I'm going to say. That's it. Okay. I'm trying to think here. I'm trying to think here. Oh, yes. Oh, you know who I just saw. Okay. Oh, Played it. You know, I love I know. you. And I, and I love favorite. Josh, too. She's your favorite. It's my favorite Canadians in here right She's now. My... Okay. Angelica's here in the <laughs> chat. Angelica, you know that you're my favorite Canadian. We even had, like, uh, we, we did one episode of a show that we kind of joked about doing we called it board games beyond borders where a canadian and a and a u.s guy talk family life and, and board games and stuff we need to do it again at some point but yeah can't, i mean angelica has been helpful to you all uh in some of the demonstrating of the games and, and things of that nature um how do you how do you all get to meet her and everything uh, well angelica has been amazing but uh you know when i'm not sure how we got to talking Maybe she can maybe she can remind me, but we figured out that she lives not too far from where our cottage is, and mm-hmm. uh, you know we're both into games, or all of us are into games, and we thought you know we should maybe meet up and, and play some games together one time when we're at the cottage, and uh, it happened to be just before Fossilus went to Kickstarter, and she saw pictures mm-hmm. of what we had, and she's like, I need to play this game. Well, that's perfect. Let's go, let's go and play. And uh, she's got some funny stories about it. I'm like cutthroat when I play any game. I don't care who I'm playing with. My children, my students. I if I'm if I'm playing, I'm playing to win. Uh, and uh, I was not nice to Angelica that that evening. <laughs> no, no. I mean, when we played Creature Comforts, there was so much trash talk, and I was like, oh my gosh. This is this is just brutal. Just hearing how people are reacting, I'm like, I don't. I've never had interactions like this with Canadians before. No, and I mean, it's wild. It's wild. But no, I I have noticed that there is a good concentration of some good designers around the Proto To area. Absolutely. Uh, Canada's yeah. Canada's so, just like, especially within the Toronto area, just like booming. Um, you know, it was, uh, the first, uh, board game cafe was here. And I think from that sprung so many, so many different things. Um, it's just really an incredible place to be. And, you know, before the pandemic hit every, uh, every month, once a month, uh, snakes and lattes would be filled Mm -hmm. with board game designers in their back room. Like it would be packed. And such uh, buzzing going on and, and just wonderful games being played and shared and, and tested and uh, so much feedback being given by each other. And it's just like such a wonderful community up here. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've, I've noticed like when, when you've got pl- people like Connor or uh, Connor from Inside Up, you've got you and Josh. Um, what was it? I'm trying to think. Who else Darryl, off the top of my head? But... Daryl Andrews yeah, is here. Uh-huh. Um, there's um, Travis. Yeah, yeah, there's just uh, it's just a really it's a really nice place to be. Yeah, yeah. no, it's it, it is really cool. So you went back into teaching now. Now here's my question in regards to teaching. So you you've learned all this publishing, you've learned a lot about game design and and and, and have been able to implement it. Uh, but have you used it and implemented it in the classroom? And how how would you recommend it for for families maybe trying to learn some things at home? Oh, what a wonderful you know, that's, question, that's what... Chris. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> it is. It's a really good question. Um, actually, even before I started publishing, I was every year I would do um, a unit on games. And we'd play a bunch of games and we'd talk about the mechanisms and the games and how they work and which ones they liked and you know, which games seemed like they were unfair, you know, Uno, for example, you miss a turn, why should I miss a turn? You know, it's like things like things like that, um, mechanisms that kids love to play with. And so I always have them choose one or two to work with 
and guide them through designing their own game. This year I happen to be in, I mean, the pandemic has just messed everything up. So uh, gaming with my students is, is virtually impossible. We, I've been on Board Game Arena with them. That's, that's, that's worked very mm -hmm. nicely. Um, but I'm also teaching a special class this year. My students have mild intellectual disabilities. Um, and this is the first okay. year I've ever taught that. And so I'm looking at gaming very differently with them and everything is more about the roles that they take. So we've uh, had a look at many role-playing games and thinking about uh, how we can integrate that into the class. So um, during the last month of school, we haven't decided yet what we're going to be playing together, but um, we're gonna go in that direction. And it's easier in terms of social distancing and stuff like that as well. So, I like that idea because role playing really can help students find ways of interacting and being able to be themselves, but at the same time have a little bit more imagination to their character. Absolutely. Um, I, I know Dustin over, uh, Dustin from Board Gaming with Education, mm -hmm. he was working on something called Worlds XP at one point where the idea was when students did well, they leveled up a little bit on their character for their final like battle or their final uh, adventure that they were about to go on, um, which kind of encouraged the students to do as well as they right. could. Now, of course, um, I, with with dealing with some disabilities, I, I can understand that that you you're having to adjust a little bit to make sure that that they're able to meet the certain levels that you're needing them to to, to meet to to do well, um, which. Which I, which I think about because with, with our youngest, we know that at some point we might, or we or not maybe not our youngest, but our middle one, middle child, at some point maybe going into like a Montessori style mm -hmm. school, which has just a different way of mm -hmm. learning to make it more approachable and more tangible. Because if some school systems, you're just like, okay, numbers, schools, test, 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 homework, test. And it doesn't always work that way with certain right. students. Well, with, mo with Honestly, most students. Honestly, it doesn't work with yeah, most students. Exactly. Yeah, most and students. Especially at the elementary level. I mean, when you're still, like, when you're still teaching kids that concrete phase of, of mathematics and science and all of that stuff where they need to get their hands in it, uh, you know, the, the game stuff really works very nicely with that. And uh, I'm... Uh, I've always been very forward thinking with my teaching and, and some teachers have, you know, they don't question my style because by the end of the school year, all the students need know all the stuff that they need to know for the, for the most part, you know, um, mm -hmm. uh, but I have a different way of teaching and I don't believe that standing up at a chalkboard with a piece of chalk and making notes on the board is, is the way to go with kids. And so uh, I do everything I can to engage my students and absolutely one of those ways is to uh, play games with them but also to try to gamify stuff I mean there's no reason why mm -hmm. kids can't be having a good time and learning at the same time that's so true I know some things that we've done with the homeschooling front is we've used a little bit of sign language and song to kind of mix it up a little <laughs> bit to kind of help them remember, okay, so we got the R's, and, you know, just like little things like um, uh, Minoans and Mezzanians. And so, like, talking, using that a little bit in song form to help them kind of figure out, okay, if I have something where I'm actually doing something kinetically mm -hmm. and then I'm doing something mm -hmm. verbally, it's more likely to... Yes, Absolutely. I, I read an article a little while ago. It was, an it was about education, and, and uh, the article was all about the more ways you can know and understand something, the deeper the knowledge will be about that thing. So if you can mm -hmm. describe how to multiply in, in 20 different ways, you know how to multiply way better than somebody who's just memorized their times table. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a difference between singing singing a song like, in 1789 in New York, <laughs> right. George Washington was granted the first power oh and responsibility <laughs> of the presidency by the U.S. Constitution. And it's just, it's, it's cute because you're creating a song, you're taking a tune, and you're saying, okay, we're, we're learning history, 
but you're learning it in a yep. different way. And then we can talk a little bit more about Washington. Like we took the kids out to DC at one point. And so, you know, we're talking about, okay, learning about Washington, learning about uh, DC, learning about Philadelphia, learning about just all these different places. Sometimes those field trips, you learn more in a field trip than you do in a classroom Absolutely. because you're, you're able to taste and see taste and see i mean why do we love conventions so much yes part of it i think is very much the the connection of getting to say hi to all these awesome people and, and having mm -hmm. fun with everybody i think it's great but when you're gonna buy a board game you're looking at oh my gosh i can actually touch it i can actually experience it and i can experience the joy of other people as they're playing with me that makes me more likely to say hey i want to pick this up myself uh, was that 30 bucks yeah 30 dollars i'm gonna do that right, right now so oh thank you for following angelica you haven't been following angelica my heart is broken right now <sighs> okay but no uh, you know i i find um education to be something that shouldn't just be like you and i you 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 agree as well it shouldn't just be tests and homework because Tests and homework is going to basically get thrown in the trash mm -hmm. later and kids aren't going to retain the right. knowledge and kids are more likely to be sponges right now where we can find different ways to feed that information in and help them understand it. I mean, they have, I mean, I have levels of Mario memorized from when I was a kid. Who, who but doesn't? if you ask me about something <laughs> I learned, yeah, but, but it was something enjoyable and something Absolutely. fun. And like you said, if we can make things fun for these kids, they're more likely to memorize it and enjoy it. Yeah. So, I mean, there, there yeah. are some people who say, well, then you're sort of setting them up for failure in the future. You know, if they want to go to university or they want to, you know, do, do uh, post-secondary education, then, you know, how are they going to be able to handle that? Well, Interestingly, I think the post-secondary institutions are beginning to get the get the understanding that people don't learn that way, and memorizing things is just uh -huh. ridiculous. So they're starting to change their programs as well, and, and the way they uh, the way they value knowledge. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it, you think about it too, like when they do get older and they are going for jobs, they're going to have a better approach. Absolutely. To those situations and to those um, to those issues that 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 happen where it's like, OK, people are going to get, you know, OK, um, life. Life is not fun, folks. Just so everybody knows life is not always fun. But there's moments where in that knowledge and in that wisdom that you have gained that you can embrace those sucky moments and be able to cope them, cope with them a whole lot better having a better appreciation of the things that you've learned before yeah. math who would have thought how much math is in board oh games my God. Yeah. but it's fun math is so much fun in board games take a look at king domino yeah absolutely. i mean multiplication and, and you know what the thing is i find it so interesting because uh, so in a class where i mean i taught seven grade seven and eight math i had students who came to me with incredible math anxieties and then you see them playing king domino for example and they're like doing math like this and they don't even think about what they're doing and they don't even realize that the thing they've been trying to do with them in class is the same thing that they're doing while they play the game um that i, I found the most success integrating games into my math in in grade seven and eight i i really loved loved doing that I miss it. I miss yeah, it. Yeah. And, and, and then you can use games and programming because there are programming games. Small, subtle things that are programming. Like, uh, what is it? That robot, uh, quirky, quirky robots. I don't know what the game is called. Ro like Plat Hat oh, games. Yeah. But, I don't know. Uh, quirky it. Circuits. Right. Yes. Is that yeah, that's quirky it. Circuits? Yeah. But that's that's a programming-based game. It's, it's, it's simple programming, but you can explain, okay, you're programming it. Now it's going to act itself out. Now you're watching. So you're basically teaching small amounts of Python to a child to understand. Okay, now I'm going to teach you Python. 
And now they even have Legos now to help kids learn Python, simple based mm-hmm. Python, yep. which, which yeah. is amazing. It's just, I mean, there are ways to make things fun. And then when they have those memories and they're learning those things, it's like, oh, I remember that. I remember that with Legos. I remember how I did that. Now I can apply this later in life and actually use that understanding and knowledge and create my mm-hmm. own rhetoric, mm-hmm. so to speak. So, um, but yeah, it's it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, but uh, Quirky Circuits. Yes, thank you. Bunny Kingdom. I haven't played Bunny Kingdom. I haven't Kingdom. played it either. So, no. I'm sorry, Angelica. <laughs> I haven't played Bunny Kingdom. So, uh, but I will tell Angelica, I did get a copy of Scythe recently. Oh, that have you played it? I finally it? got my copy... I am about to, <laughs> I've, I've been looking at it because I'm reading through the rule book because the reason being we loved my little site, right? That was a lot of fun for us as a family. So now it's the idea. Okay. We enjoyed my little scythe. Now let's get ourselves into basic scythe and kind of see how the kids do it. When Daniel saw the game, he was like super excited. He's my 12 year old. Mm-hmm. He's going to turn 13 years this, this year. I'm going to have two new teenagers. It's scary, <laughs> but he he was excited and i'm like okay because we're gonna we're gonna take the time to actually play it and learn it um surprising enough we've we've done really well with some of those heavier mm-hmm. games some of the crunchier games and uh it, he he understands it so well that's amazing like, that's that's the thing that's amazing yeah i mean well th- these kids these kids are just smart i don't understand where they get it from it's probably from their mom not from me we have um so so we have two we have two kids and and uh they, they both play games. One of them um, enjoys the family weight game and games that are a little bit quicker. And the younger one, who's nine years old, was playing Kalis with us a few weeks ago. And it it kind of blew my mind. I mean, I knew he could handle it, but just watching my mm-hmm. nine-year-old making decisions and talking about why he was making those decisions just was like, Wow. It's one when thing kids, my, when my, my 12 year old does it. It's another thing when my nine year old is doing it. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's kids, kids. I, I sometimes I don't think we give kids enough credit when it comes to learning. Uh, we're like, okay, they, they may not fully understand all their multiplication tables. They may not fully understand all these things, but if you un- explain a game to them, they, they can catch on really quick. I mean, look at look at what D and D does for kids. I oh mean, yeah, absolutely. D and D. You're like, okay, they're having to use logical thought. They're trying to make these decisions based on a character sheet. They're having to figure out, okay, they're learning statistics for crying yep. out loud. They're like, okay, what are the chances of me rolling this 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 die in the right way? Okay, I have a plus so and so modifier. That means I'm going to have this and this. And I'm looking at my kids. I'm like. What is going what? on? <laughs> yeah. What the crap? Yeah. But it's 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 just it's so good. Yeah, and James, it's good. There's nothing wrong with with liking good family weight games. I've noticed that there's a good balance between family weight and heavier weight party games, deception games, um, because it's so so enjoyable to to get those little breaths of fresh mm-hmm. air. I've noticed that filler games are so good, or family weight games are so good. When you just need to sit down at the table and not think as much, uh, and, but still, those family weight games give you enough depth and thought that you can at least make it competitive. Well, I mean, I mean, um, like that's I, that's like really huge for us. Uh, you know, again, that's that's basically why we started KTBG. I I can't, I can't actually sit down. I, I mean, it's fun to play like point salad or you know something that just will take fifteen minutes to play and and we can play it three times in a row. It's fun to do that once in a while, but I, I just, I, I want to sit down and I want to enjoy myself. I want to spend the time. I want to, I want it to be a little bit more crunchy. So, uh, being able to share that with my kids is hugely important. Well, I love the fact that you all decided from, from your experiences as a family to say, okay, we, you know, let's make mm-hmm. something so we can enjoy this stuff mm-hmm. together. Because to me, I think to myself, um, when we when we've played Monopoly for I don't know how many hundred times, which don't get me wrong, Monopoly was not a bad game. People ruined it with house rules. Yes, that's absolutely. really what's happened. It's, it's it's house rules have really ruined Monopoly. If people played by the base rules, you could get through it very quickly. 
Um, I know I've played in a Monopoly tournament. It is ridiculous. <laughs> um, I don't know how I made it to the final table, but it was just, it was one of those situations where I was like, I played smart, I guess. I don't know. But it's, it, you know, but there's, there's those points where you just need to have those games where as a parent, you need to have that competitiveness mm-hmm. in it. But you need to have it at a level where your kids can be able to enjoy it and understand it too, so you can have that competitive back and forth with Absolutely. them. Absolutely. Um, and I think I think it's really cool that your family decided, okay, let's make something where we can bring this to the table with our kids, still get the crunchiness out of it, and just be able to have a good time. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. But yeah. So. So I'm horrible at segues. So I'm I'm going to go straight into it though. There's something else that that you all are doing now you you've you've made kids table board yeah. games you've made burnt island games you found these different mediums to be able to reach people now you're actually doing something that's going to be helping the community in a whole different way but at the same time bringing them into this amazing industry that we're a part of tell us what this is and uh, and, and and just I know this is something that is still very new uh, but you, 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 you were, you, you just got me the logo, I think yes, yesterday, well, we haven't even which is really it yet, cool. So... Oh, yeah, oh, here we are. well, I'm guess. All right. Hey folks, guess what? We're going to announce something really cool. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to let you cool. go ahead. Uh, so, uh, we have been doing nicely and, uh, as you mentioned, we have such an amazing, uh, community of gamers here in Canada and an even more amazing community of game designers here in Canada. One thing we've been noticing is that there are many underrepresented groups here and all over the world, really. But um, Mm -hmm. And so we want to help do something about that. Uh, So we have created this um, award that will go out to one person each year. It's uh, called the KTBG's, I have not said this out loud yet, so KTBG's Canadian Game Designer of Tomorrow Award, um, where we'll be giving away $1,000 each year for the at least the next 10 years. Um, that's our promise to the Canadian uh, designer community. Um, to someone who is from an underrepresented community and would like to pursue um, designing games uh, and uh, someone who's very serious about it um, and specifically games that speak to uh, being Canadian uh, or uh, Indigenous um, but we want it to come from us and to go to somebody here in Canada. And uh, we're really excited about this because we do believe that it will encourage more names to come out to, of the woodwork. Uh, and that's really what we're looking for because there are so many out there and, and uh, they're just not comfortable enough to do it themselves or you know, they need some support. Uh, from from someone else in the industry or a company in the industry that that has a, a little bit of a name a name for themselves. So um, we're so 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 excited about this. Um, you know, it, it's really funny how this came about. Um, do you know Zach Zach Connolly? Um, he made uh, you know I don't know him I don't think personally but we have interacted briefly on facebook um zach i'm sorry we haven't had deep conversations uh but you're welcome to send a friend request and you're always welcome to talk well he so. he is a game designer and uh one day he he posted about um the 600 dollars that he got from the government to help for you know whatever your stimulus packages were for for each individual uh oh, yeah. and he, you know yeah. he he just decided he was going to donate that and so um, we received one as well. Um, and my first thought was that at the time I felt like I needed it because I was not sure what this, what was going to happen with this pandemic. Um, mm-hmm. And 
I don't need it. We don't need it as badly as I thought we were going to need it. And so I want to, uh, you know, I want to donate that and put some money toward it as well and, and uh, do something nice for the community who also has been so incredibly supportive to us. Like the, the uh, Canadian board game designers are amazing. So here we are. That's, that's really cool. Um, I, I like the fact that you decided to take uh, a blessing that was given to you and you're choosing to bless other yep. people. Um, that's, that's very, that's really cool <laughs> because I think it, a lot of people, I mean, you think about it, you, you all were very fortunate to go into uh, with Josh going to uh, Z man games and doing the artwork and everything of that nature. You all were able to get in the door yep. that way. And then you were able to take that and make it into something um, for yourself, which that's big. And I like the fact that you're making it possible for other designers to have a chance to get their foot in the door. Um, which, I mean, because when you hear about some people and their, their battles with Kickstarter, it's not always easy. Oh, it's, it's, uh, Kickstarter I mean, is it's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you're, 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 you're thinking about just fees in itself. Yeah. Like that's fees, production. You're thinking about the time it's going to take for you to make sure it's all polished and well. You got to get the right distributor because if you don't have the right distributor, uh, then you're having delays. Then there is actual the shipping delays, which I, th I don't think there's a Kickstarter that ever really truly delivers on time for most part. Now, hold on. Maybe you all. Maybe you all. But but let's with with everything going on right now over in China with freighting, with the freight system going on a lot of things are getting delayed and because then they're also having to go and be held in customs for so mm -hmm. many, so many mm -hmm. days, especially with COVID going on They're They're doing additional days for, for putting in holding mm -hmm. patterns before it actually hits the warehouses. And then after it hits the warehouses, it's got to get packaged product, uh, package shipped, sent out. And you're thinking about, okay, all that time, but not only is that time for a person, that's Absolutely. money as well, where they're having to learn, they're having to figure out, okay, am I getting the most out of this game that I'm producing? So the fact that you're giving them that 1,000 start is a nice way to help them to not have as much stress. Because you think about Game Crafter, you can go to Game Crafter, you can get your uh, prototype copy and everything, and you can kind of work with them, and you can get your print and plays and all that stuff. Plus, you have to also look at, if you're a designer, you've got to find somebody that's probably going to be the artist. Um, unless you can do it yourself. Not everybody is Ryan Lockett. Um, but there's, it, it's, it's, <laughs> that's nice that you're doing Thank that. You. Yeah. You. It's nice that you're all doing that. So that's, that's really Thank cool. You. Um, when, when is this all going to go into effect? When, it, when, how are you going to. Well, right now we're working um, on um, having a, a panel uh, with like five or six uh, people to be working with us. We do have our first panelist um, beyond KTBG, and that is uh, Roberta Taylor, who is the designer of Creature Comforts, actually. She was the per first person um, that we asked. Actually, we have two. Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I, I blanked on the second one. We have two people <laughs> who we're working with, uh, and the, the second is the designer, uh, Sen Fung Lim, um, who is also from uh, the Toronto area. And so, uh, so far it's the two of them, but we're working on the panel now. Um, and then we're going to uh, come up with a mission statement together and then uh, the criteria for, for the award. Um, so I, I'm thinking probably within the next month or two, we will uh, send a, a, out an actual announcement and invite uh, anyone who wants to apply for it um, or for someone else to even put forward your name, that's, that's cool too. Yeah. I like that. Um, now, now my other question, what are some ways, how, how are people able right now? Now, of course, conventions haven't really started back up. I don't know what the situation fully is with, with Canada opening back up stuff or anything like that. I know you kind of all been a, in a serious lockdown uh, for some mm -hmm. time, but what are some ways for people to be able to 
um, be able to try out the games. I know I, I personally have gotten the chance to play with you all, but what are some things that we can be looking forward to so that we can actually see some of these games um, virtually in different ways? To be able well, to play them. that's an interesting. Uh, it's interesting that you ask because we are making a plan to release a package of games, both uh, KTBG and Burnt Island, within the next couple of weeks. We have uh, Creature Comforts, of course, and Rec Raiders, and uh, Endeavor Age of Sail, and also in the Hall of the Mountain King. So all four games uh, will be ready and. Uh, up online and you'll be able to link to them. Uh, they'll be on uh, tabletop simulator and you'll be able to uh, get the mods for them or whatever you call it. I'm so bad at that stuff um, uh, through our website. Website. Yeah. Very cool. I like that. Yeah. Because I, I think to myself, the one thing that a lot of people, we, we can't, we can't go out to the stores. I mean, yeah. Here in the States, you can, you can, but it's not always wise to, I mean, of course, be masks, get your vaccines if you're able to, uh, I'm not, uh, but yeah, you've, my thought is okay. I, I would love to go into my game store tomorrow and learn a game and play a game, but I've learned that for the safety of the people in that store and for the safety of myself, even though I've got both vaccines, it's probably wise for me to follow what the CDC yeah. says. And then if I want to go ahead and support that store somehow, uh, check and see if they have the curbside right. service, which, which is a good route to go or see like some, some friendly local game stores I know have like a membership where you pay like something a month and it gives you kind of priority stuff, but it's also helping sustain the payroll basically for a lot of mm -hmm. the staff, the basic maintenance and mm -hmm. payroll, um, which, which is big. So yeah, no, well, we, no, uh, Angelica, you're going to teach everybody. That's <laughs> the one thing that we're going to have you do. And uh, did you not hear that? Angelica just now? is like, she is the best game teacher. I, I have said this to her before, but every time we go to convention, I just want her to be there all the time. I love her. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, she she is, I think, a, a true raving fan for for publishers. Absolutely. Um, I know she's done com, com customer service for, for I think Steeped Games or Community mm -hmm. Manager. I, I don't know what the proper terminology is. I mean, it's community management. So the the fact that like community management, when you have a Kickstarter running late, to be in that position, God bless you. Absolutely. God bless you so much. <laughs> Because that's got to be that's got to be a crazy world to be that person that's the middleman, absolutely, uh, in between the the publisher and the customer, and the customer may not be happy. And as the as the middle person, you're having to say, "Hey, this is kind of what's going on. I understand your frustration. I'm trying to stay calm myself." Because God bless, you're gonna drive me insane. But you know, I like I I can just picture it's got to be hard sometimes in those positions for for community managers to keep this person happy while also making it a point to say, hey, these people aren't very happy right <laughs> yeah. now. They're what what are things that we can do to so to make a solution for them? Is there ways to take care of them? I. I feel like people who are community managers and actually dealing with backers and, and irate people because their crab meeple came with a lost limb, you know. Oh, gosh. I, I, no, not a lost limb. Yeah. Oh, I my. feel like they're, you know, the... Um, the the people who do the spinning plates on the... On the uh, what are they called on the, on the sticks and there's one mm -hmm. on the chin and two on the hands and some on the shoulder. Yeah. I feel like that's what, what, that's what they're doing. That's what that job is. And it's amazing. Yeah. And it's amazing when all the plates don't fall down. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think I've only at, at one time, I think I've actually just reached out to the publisher and I said, Hey, just so you know, this one piece came uh, like broken just to let you know. And it's like, um, I don't know if, how you want to handle it. If not, it's cool. And they, they immediately sent out uh, like this little plastic piece that, that I was and, needing. And, and that's understandable. Absolutely. And, that's and that's usually, good. That's good and enough. And usually that's how it happens. But I don't know. Sometimes like 
uh, I'll get a game and, and there's like a chip in the, in the uh, insert. And like, to me, it's an yeah. insert. It's not part of the game. It's not integral to what's oh. happening. And I'm just like, uh, I'll just say like, Oh, that really stinks. It really stinks that it came this way and my life moves yeah. on or, you know, or a piece comes broken. Okay. Let's take out the wood glue and stick it together. Yeah. Let's see if we can <laughs> fix it. Yeah. I mean, plastic, it's a little bit harder to fix those That's pieces, true. but yeah. yeah, the wood pieces, yeah. it's easy yeah. to fix. But yeah, like I had a game come in, the box was caved in a little bit. Okay. Are all the pieces still in good? That's my first concern. It's not about, oh no, this box has a tear <laughs> or this box has been, been put through the ringer because honestly, I would prefer publishers send me the ding and dents than to send me the copies right. they're going to send out to right. a customer. Because I want the customer right. to get the best. I, I mean, you know what? I if, a couple of weeks ago, I you know, more than a couple of weeks ago already, but I sent out a an empty box of Endeavor to France, and it cost me sixty dollars. Holy yeah. cow! And they were offered like a twenty percent, uh, a twenty percent refund. Um, but they were a collector. And listen, I understand that too, because I love my games. I'm proud of my game shelf and I want it to look mm -hmm. nice. And so I do, I totally get it. It's just so heartbreaking. And then like all the, you know, the, uh, the repercussions in, in terms of, you know, like our ecosystem and our carbon footprint and what am I doing, making all these things and sending out this one little, little piece to South Africa in this massive envelope so it doesn't break. So, so many things to think about. Anyway. <laughs> it's, 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 it's wild stuff, but I, I, I have to say, I am beyond excited though, to see more about this scholarship. I know me, I'm not from Canada. I'm not going to be able to participate. Sorry. Plus, honestly, I'm probably not going to go into uh, board game design. I'm enjoying kind of doing what I'm doing already. Unless, unless somebody wants to make a board game about that, <laughs> but um, you know, but in my thoughts, just, just the fact that you were able to take something like education, taking your, your um, being parents over, over kids and trying to find ways to approach them, and then also being able to take all of that, turn it into something fun in an industry, uh, and then find a way to take the blessings that you all have been given and give that back to the community, that's beautiful. It's a good story. Um and I, I appreciate the fact of you coming on and just telling people. I know we've, we've had uh, our audience has not really dwindled at all. Sweet. Uh, because your story is a great yeah, story. Yeah. I'm like, ooh, I'm like, glance. every once in a while I glance uh, just to quickly check and see, see if somebody types in a chat or a message or anything. And we've had a pretty awesome audience already. Um, of course, Angelica's in here still, which is, which is, that's so nice. So, but yeah, I mean, we've got Fletch in here from the op. Uh, love Fletch. Um, board Game Binge is in here saying, Go Canada. James, who is an amazing member of the community. Um, I, I've never been on a chat where he hasn't said, Hello, my friend. Oh, like He truly nice. welcomes welcomes people when they're in there. But yeah, no, it's, it's, it's neat to be able to see what your family is doing. Thank you. Um, and that you're able to still continue to educate because you found that you have two loves. Of course, you have your family. That's right. another love, of course. But but your, your two loves of, you know, board games, you've really enjoyed doing that uh, because of your love for your family and trying to find ways to, to reach them and still be able to have that competitive nature, which, believe me, she has a ridiculously competitive <laughs> nature in games. Um, seriously, we played two games. Two games, and there was more trash talking in those two games than in any of my other streams. So, Yeah. Um, but I, I also love the fact that, that you all are, are taking the scholarship route, um, because it's just really cool. I mean, not, not every publisher says, Hey, we're going to find ways of doing this. I mean, yes, there's, there's organizations where I know that some deal with like the mentorship program, which is really cool. Um, and I think those are really neat, but I like the idea that you're thinking to yourself, okay, we're, we're from Canada. We have a great amount of designers and people here in this area. Let's go ahead and find a way to help people that maybe have not been able to get out and put their name out there and say, let's make mm -hmm. this happen for you. Thank you. So that's very cool. Thanks. Yeah. 
<sighs> Let's see here. Somebody said the Zenobia is award is is new as well. I don't know what that is. Yeah, the Zenobia. I don't know. I have to look that up later. So now I've got to find that out. But yeah, very cool. But yeah, folks, we're going to head out. Um, I want to say a special thank you to Helena for coming on. Um, of course, uh, it, I am I am excited to hear about this new game that's coming out next week that has something to do with one of their other games. So, so there's a 12th game coming out, which has something to do with a, one of their 11 other games. Um, and it's a burnt and it's go a, ahead and make your guesses. And it's in a the burnt t- island game. It's a burnt yeah, because island game. We just game. finished so with I'm, Creature I'm, Comforts, which was a uh, kids', kids table, table board games. Yeah. Okay, so I I mean I think it has to do something with Hall of Mountain King, but that's just me. I'm not saying anything. I'm not okay. I just uh, I mean that that one's still pretty hot right now from what I've heard. Um, but yeah, everybody else in the chat, you go ahead and start guessing like crazy too. Maybe we can try to like squeeze an answer. I don't know, but no, probably not. But yeah, I I I cannot wait, and I do love the fact that you are going to make it possible for people to play on tabletop simulator. I know we've played a couple of the versions we've played the, uh, like we said, recreators and creature comforts. I like the fact that you're bringing those out because then, you know, the creature comforts, people will be able to try it ahead of time too. So that when it does hit retail, people can say, okay, I liked it when I played it on TTS. Now I'm more likely to buy it. And that is truly how I have bought a couple of my games is because, well, I mean, it makes sense if, if publishers have a legit copy available on tts or tabletopia i'm excited about it i don't i try not to show anything on a live stream i I make it a point that when i'm on a live stream and i'm showing something on tts or tabletopia it's got to be a legit file from the Mm -hmm. publisher thank you because i appreciate that well it, it makes sense i mean i want your game to be represented the best way that you want it to be represented if it's not on there i'm not gonna play it i don't have the time i don't my kids my kids are like daddy are you coming back upstairs at some point no no i'm not <laughs> good night daddy no 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 i can't wait we're gonna play we're gonna be playing board games uh live with them on the table for a couple of our live streams which is gonna be great well, so um let, yeah it's gonna let be a lot me of fun. know if you want me to send you anything twist my arm gosh that's oh goodness what send me games? What? Whatever. Okay, I Whatever. Think I might be able to. Uh, yeah. Well, it. <laughs> I have oh, to talk to uh, the boss I won't, first. I w- <laughs> Aren't you the boss? Yes, that was the joke. <laughs> okay. Okay. I was like, I'm like, what? I'm like, is there a secret, a secret person out there? <laughs> no, I, I can't handle somewhere I can't in handle the shadows. More than myself. <laughs> <laughs> My wife says nobody can handle me. Well, I think I think when when everybody when my wife got married to me, people said it's never going to be a dull moment. <laughs> That's what they said. Nice. And I think now to this day she's like, yeah, it's never a dull moment. Very so, nice. So, but yeah. But folks, we appreciate y'all coming on. Uh, you know, I, I I look forward to hearing about next week. Please continue to follow what Kids Table Board Game is doing and if you're in Canada and you are a designer, that is looking for a chance to get your foot in the door, please be on the lookout for that scholarship. That's super cool. I mean, a chance to get $1,000 to be able to go towards that type of stuff. Prototyping, um, pieces, things of that nature. That's really big. That's really big because that's going to help out a lot towards not even even a quarter of that cost. I mean, a quarter of that cost is really going to be that. And then you can at least have some sort of cushion to start getting yourself in the door, whether it be with publishers or whether it be, uh, you know, hit, taking your thing to Kickstarter. Mm-hmm. But yeah, a thousand dollars is a big way to help out. So that's really great. But folks, we'll see you all later. Once again, special thank you to Helena. And we're going to wish you all a great night. Come back in 30 minutes. We will be back with Michael and Christina Pitry of Pentry Games. They just had their game come out called On the Rocks. Which is uh, which is a cute uh, cute little game that.